With the New York Giants sitting at 1-4 and four and entering Sunday, night game, Sunday night's game against the Buffalo Bills as 14-point underdogs, I've been asked a couple of times, and I've seen some people hint at the idea that the Giants should trade a Dory Jackson. So I'm going to give you my top a Dory Jackson trade destination on today's video. But what leads me to believe that the Giants could inevitably trade a Dory Jackson is they have been reluctant to A, give him a contract extension, and B, restructure his contract, which tells me this year was an open tryout, essentially, for the Giants to give him a long-term deal. I think it's more about the play of the Giants than the play of him that is going to be the deciding factor of if the Giants do trade him. I will say this. Adoree Jackson is still a good football player. Is he a number one corner on a contending team in this league? Probably not anymore. I think he's a great number two corner. He's the best corner the Giants have. And if you're a Super Bowl defense and you're looking for a corner that can elevate your secondary and put you into the driver's seat to where you can, can contend for a Lombardi trophy, I think Adoree Jackson could help a team like this. Uh, he's good, but I'm not interested in re-signing him at this point. I think the Giants need to kind of just understand where they are at this point. They're a long way away from winning a Super Bowl. And I don't think paying a Dory Jackson, a 28-year-old corner, uh, I believe, just let me double check his age real quick, 28, just turned 28, he'll be 29 by uh, September 18th. I don't think paying a 29-year-old corner um, top of the market money right now is going to help the Giants all that much. I wouldn't be mad if they re-signed because you need more corners. You always need corners. But at the end of the day, I'm not re-signing him, and I don't think the Giants have that much interest in re-signing him, or they would have already given him a contract extension and could have freed up some money this offseason to, you know, maybe sign an offensive lineman. So, Joe Shane, call your buddy Brandon Bean. Do that for me. Joe, pick up the phone, type in Brandon Bean, and give him a call and say, hey, yo, Brandon, I've been paying attention to the Buffalo Bills, and I saw your top corner, Tredavious White, is hurt, and he's not going to play for the rest of the season. Well, I've got a corner in a Dory Jackson for you that I think could help your team and be a replacement for Tredavious White. Because when you look at the cornerback depth chart right now for the Buffalo Bills, it's not good. It's not good. Dane Jackson, solid player. Uh, Taron Johnson, okay. Kyrie Ulam was getting some DNPs this year. Um, and their top player, Tredavious White, who's a really good football player, is hurt. And we know that Joe Shane and Brandon Bean – have a really good relationship, and the Bills need a corner. So could the Giants potentially call up uh, Brandon Bean and try to trade him to the Buffalo Bills? I think it makes sense for both sides at this point. What do you think? Would you trade a Dory Jackson for a fourth-round pick? If Brandon Bean said, you know what, Joe, I'll take a Dory. I'll take him on his expiring contract. He's going to help us fill the need of Tredavious White, but I'm only going to do it for a fourth-round pick. Let me know what you think. Would you do it? Would you trade a Dory for a fourth? Type T for trade, type P for path. That'll be the pinned comment on today's show. So when you get hit with that YouTube ad break, scroll on down and let me know would you do it. Another reason that I'm not totally against trading a guy like a Dory Jackson is because I want to see more from Cordell Flott. I thought Cordell Flott played extremely well against, uh, against the Miami Dolphins in week five for the New York Giants, and also Pro Football Focus thought the same thing. Look how they graded Cordell Flott in the snaps that he did play. He ended up playing 27 snaps for the Giants in Week 5, and I thought he really showed out in those uh, snaps. When you look at the stats, they gave him a 90 overall grade, Pro Football Focus did. They gave him a 90.5 pass coverage grade, which is extremely good. They gave him a tackling grade of 81.5, he had a pass breakup, and he did in just 27 snaps. Cordell Flott has played 57 snaps this year, and 41 of them have come in the slot. And I think that as a third-round pick entering year two, I want to do more than um, – I want to do more of a full evaluation of the player that Cordell Flott can be because he's made some big splash plays. Had that big pass breakup in the playoff game against K.J. Osborne. He's come up and made some really good tackles in the screen and run game. And he looked good, in my opinion, against the Miami Dolphins. I also thought he looked pretty good uh, the prior week uh, as well against the Seattle Seahawks as he just came back from injury. Also this, let Trey Hawkins play, man. 
Uh, he's not he, he's not ready to be a full time starter on a contending team. Thing is, the Giants aren't a contending team right now. Yes, he's a six round pick, but he obviously is liked on this team and in the front office, or he wouldn't have been a starter the first four weeks, uh, first three weeks, excuse me, of the season. So I want to see a little bit more of Cordell Flott. I want to see a little Trey Hawkins play. Aaron Robinson, who hasn't played a football game in a year for the Giants, he was, I believe, a third round pick in 2021. Uh, don't quote me on that exactly. But he's going to be coming back from injury soon, and I'd like to see what he could do. I love Adore. I'm thankful for everything he did for the Giants. I think he's a good football player. Um, I just think it's time for the Giants to start prepping for the future a little bit more. I think trading Adore Jackson uh, could potentially do that. I know this. If the Giants trade Adore Jackson, we're going to be making a video on this channel as soon as possible. So if the Giants make a move, you better make sure you're subscribed so you can get the details on everything that just went down. I want to thank everybody that has already subscribed. Almost at 37,000 subs on the channel. It's a crazy accomplishment. Be a part of the squad. Hit that sub button right now. Coming up in a second, I'm going to give you my top Giants trade candidates outside of Dory Jackson. He's going to make that list, but I'm going to tell you about some other guys that I think Joe Shane could be taking and making calls on coming up in a quick sec. But first, I've got to give a huge shout-out to today's sponsor, Game Time. It's the best ticketing app in the game. And we're going to give you $20 off your first purchase if you download the Game Time app and use the promo code Giants Chat. So what it's going to look like when you are ready to complete your first purchase, it's going to ask you to redeem a code. Just put in Giants Chat right there, and you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. One thing that I love about Game Time is it's easy and it's stress-free. Sometimes buying tickets can be a hassle. You're worried about spending a lot of money. You're worried about paying for a lot of fees. Well, Game Time, they're going to guarantee that you're going to get the lowest price Guaranteed. You're also going to get a view of the stadium or concert venue from your particular seat. So you're going to get to see what it's going to look like from the seat that you're potentially going to buy. The price will also drop as the events get closer. And that, once again, they're going to guarantee that you get the lowest price. Stress-free, hassle-free, easy. Takes very little amount of time, and you're going to get the best deal possible. Download the Game Time app in the App Store. And if you use the promo code GIANTSCHAT, you're going to get $20 off. Um, I love it. I used it a couple times, uh, a couple of concerts I went to this summer. It's awesome. You guys are going to love it, too. Uh, download the app. And use the promo code GIANTSCHAT. All righty. I think Adore Jackson is at the top of the list when it comes to Giants trade candidates because I think he's a guy that has a lot of value across the league right now. He's a corner that's still sticky in coverage and can win some one-on-one -on -one matchups. And if you add him to a defense that's good, I think you take your secondary over the top. Other players that I think the Giants are going to be taking and making calls on, uh, Leonard Williams is a guy... Uh, that kind of comes to mind for me. Leonard has been good this season overall. It doesn't necessarily show that exactly in the stat sheet, uh, but he has 12 tackles, half a sack, but he's been good overall, and he's a guy that is on an expiring deal. Like Adore Jackson, we said, the Giants have had multiple opportunities to extend him or give him a contract extension or restructure, uh, excuse me, give him an extension or contract restructure that extends his money in the future. They've been unwilling to do so, which tells me, that they're not all the way in on re-signing Leonard Williams. And if a team out there wants to trade a fourth or a fifth round pick for him, uh, I would absolutely do it. Another player that I think could be on the chopping block when it comes to trade candidates is Xavier McKinney. I think Xavier McKinney is a solid football player. I, I don't think he's a great football player, though. And right now, as a guy that's going to be a free agent this upcoming offseason, he's going to be wanting to command top 10 safety money. And to be quite frank with you, He's not a top 10 safety. I also haven't liked the comments that he's made too much. I'm not going to dive too much into those. If you know, you know. He's somewhat called out the offense. Someone asked him following the Dolphins game, what do you think about giving up big play after big play? And he said, well, one thing we're not going to do is blame the defense again. So pretty much he threw the offense under the bus. Has a C on his chest, um, but hasn't been much of a captain in my opinion. Got hurt on the bye week last year and hasn't really been the same player since. And he's also an injury-prone player. At that, I like X. Always been a fan of his. I think it's best for him to go to go play somewhere else at this point as well. It's best for the Giants to see if they can get some draft compensation in return for him. A player that has been a complete bust, I would say, for the Giants so far this year is Paris Campbell. Uh, I drank the Paris Campbell sauce. Um, I thought Paris Campbell was going to be really good for this football team. He just hasn't, and it's not all his fault. Look, I think he could be a solid player on a team that has a good offensive line and a good quarterback. Right now, the Giants are looking for both those as they don't really have them on their roster. So has six, think about this. 16 catches for 85 yards, right? 
85, 85 divided by 16. That's 5.3 yards per catch. Think about it like this. He has a long catch of 17 yards. 85 minus 17. Seven, 15 catches for 80, 68 yards. The man is averaging 4.5 yards per catch. That's, that's more so to do with this team, this function of this offense and everything. But his snap count has gone down each of the last two weeks. Wandell Robinson's snap count is going up, as well as throwing Shepard, as Campbell is looking on the outside end right now in this wide receiver depth chart. Maybe you could trade him for a sixth or seventh round pick. Not going to get much more than that, but at least you could potentially get something. And obviously, I'm going to include Saquon Barkley in this trade candidates list. I've talked about him numerous times before. Uh, I think the Giants need to just move on from Saquon Barkley. Great player. I'm not saying he's not. I think he's a great player. I think he's a top back in this league. Right now, the Giants have so many holes, and they're not going to extend Saquon Barkley after this season, so why not try to get a draft pick back for him right now? It'll be a sad day if it happens. I'm going to be upset. I think it's one of those situations you've got to take a step back or a couple steps back, to maybe take a test step to the side, and then eventually take a step forward. Because if you lose him for nothing in free agency, all of us are going to be mad. I'll know you that. I'll, I'll give you that for sure. I know that for a fact. At the end of the day, Joe Shane and Brian Dable need to have an honest conversation. What is this team? What can they realistically achieve? And what do we want to be? Do we want to try to push the limit and make the playoffs this year and maybe rattle off a couple of wins? Or we need to accept that this team's not all that good right now. Look, schedule gets easier over the next seven weeks. It just does. At the same time, the Giants just aren't that good of a football team right now. Always going to root for this team to win. But I think the brain trust of this organization needs to be honest with themselves. Is this a good football team? If you think they are, we run with it. If not, I think it's, start to start, it's time to start prepping for the future. That's what I believe. Should the Giants start trading players? What do you think? Should they start trying to get back some draft picks that could potentially help them in the future? They traded us two seventh-round picks already, one for Isaiah Simmons, one for Boogie Basham. You got it. Maybe it's a draft once again. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know what you think. And as always, you can give me a follow over on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. Tweet about the Giants every day, all day. Just give me a follow over there.